Oh, hi, everybody. It's Mrs. P. I'm so glad to see you again. I'm here with Atticus, our fish. He's hiding. I think he's asleep, but he'll swim out around here. and We'll see him soon. How are you? I miss you, but I'm so glad that we can still be together, and that's terrific. Well, today, we're going to look at an exciting letter, the letter E. There it is, the big E, the uppercase E, and little e, lowercase e. Now, uppercase e looks different than lowercase e. The big e is a line down and three lines that come out from there. And that's not too hard, is it? Well, a little e isn't that hard either. It's a circle, but not a complete circle. And then we just draw a little line in there. So that's E. Take a look at big E and little e. Try to memorize that. The sound that it makes is eh. Can you say eh? Eh? It's kind of funny. There's a, a country called Canada that's above the United States. And when they say what, they instead of saying what like us, they say eh? Eh? And that's the E sound. Eh? Like that. Okay, well, let's take a look at some cool E things. I hope you're well. I miss you, you know that, but I get to talk to you every Thursday. Well, that's my favorite part of the week when I get to talk to you. Well, let's see what's in here. Oh, yeah, there's something in there. I love surprises, don't you? Let's talk about this. I'll give you some clues and see if you can decide what this might be. Well, this is an animal and it lives in Africa with the giraffes and the rhinoceroses and the other animals, the lions live there. But this animal is really, really big and he is gray and he has a really long nose and he likes water. And I bet you know what he is because he starts with the letter E. He is an, can you say it? you I just think you know everything you're so smart but we keep learning well nobody knows everything we just keep learning all our lives I keep learning right along with you everything I share with you I had to learn too well here's our elephant there he is oh he's a big fellow yes he is he's got that long trunk let's talk about elephants a little bit they're very interesting if you look at an elephant, do you see his upper lip there? Can you see any upper lip at all? No, I can't see an upper lip. That's because his upper lip is fused or joined to his nose. Now, what if your upper lip was fused to your nose? Oh, you would look so funny, wouldn't you? You would maybe sound funny, too. That's not right for you and I, but it's just right for an elephant. His upper lip and his nose are one piece. Yeah. Now, my elephant here, he has a place for his tusks to come out, but I don't know. They didn't put tusks on this one. But usually they have long white tusks, like long bones that come out here. And I know you've seen them. But there's a place for his tusks there, if you can see. I'll hold it real still. Can you see? Yeah, there. You can see it. Yeah. Now, he's cool. Elephants eat 18 hours a day. 18 hours a day? What? You and I? Well, we might eat, if we eat three times, it takes 20 minutes of time. Well, we wouldn't even eat a solid hour a day, not you and I. But the elephant, he does 18 hours a day, but he eats only plants. And so he has to eat constantly to keep this really huge body size. Now I'm holding this model in my hand, but if an elephant was really in my living room, he would fill up the whole room. Why, I couldn't even get him out of here. I'd have to cut the wall out so the elephant could get out. He is really big. So if he was in your living room, it'd be like that too. Now elephants are generally very nice animals and peaceful animals, and they like each other. 
Uh, they live in their families, and their families are about 15 elephants. And the female elephants are the leaders of the, the herds. Usually the male, the boy elephants, they kind of go off on their own, and they're sometimes with the pack of elephants. But another name, by the way, for an elephant is a pachyderm. That starts with the letter P. Can you say pachyderm? Yeah, that's another name for an elephant. So if somebody says, hey, there's a pachyderm, you'll know they see an elephant for sure. So there he is, 18 hours a day he eats. And when they have babies, when they have babies, the babies are born blind. They can't see. But they'll get their eyesight, but they can't see when they're born. Well, even human beings, new babies, they can't see very far. Like their mother's faces are really, have to be really close to them, to babe, human babies to see. Well, elephants, they can't see like either. So the eyesight develops in the elephants and in the human babies. But the elephants are okay because all the female elephants in the herd, they take care of that baby. Just like they're like, it's like having 15 moms. Moms work together. Even human moms work together, which I'm really glad for. Anyway, so that's the elephant. Oh, and its trunk, this part of it, just that part alone, weighs 400 pounds. Well, that's like two grown men. The weight of how heavy two grown men are is how heavy the elephant's trunk is. So, but it has a lot of muscles in it, so it can pick up its trunk even though it's super heavy. This works really good. Did you know that elephants are good swimmers? Well, it's important to learn to swim someday, but don't ever try to swim without mommy right beside you. Never go near the water, ever, ever, ever. Nope. Mommy always has to be right beside you, and you'll learn to swim someday, and that's important, but not yet. And always with a grown-up. But elephants are good swimmers. And they can put their whole body underwater. And they stick their trunk up above the water. And they can breathe in and out of here. And so they can still breathe even when they're under the water. You and I can't do that. No way. But an elephant can. I really like the elephant. They're pretty awesome. And did you know? I bet. I didn't know this. I just learned it. Elephants are afraid of ants. That little tiny bug that crawls under the grass, doesn't like ants. It's afraid of ants and it's afraid of bees too. Bees buzzing around. Well, we don't like bees to land on us. We're grateful for bees because they give us honey, but elephants don't like them near them. And you and I don't really want bees near us either. We try to stay away from bees. Well, so do elephants, tiny little bees and ants. Who would have guessed? Well, say goodbye, Mr. Elephant. Thanks for coming today. And we'll just sit Mr. Elephant up here by Atticus, and he can watch Atticus, our fish. Yeah. Well, let's take, talk about the next thing that begins with the letter E. I'll put it in our tub. And it's small. Let's see what it sounds like. Oh, yeah, it's in there for sure. Hear it? Sounds like a little drum. Okay. Well, let's take a look. But first, let's try to guess what it is. And i got to tell you, this is going to be really hard to guess. Like, because I don't know if you know about it yet. And how are you going to guess something that you don't know about? Well, you might know, but Mrs. P is going to give you some clues and then I'm going to tell you what it is. This is a vegetable and it's related to tomatoes, but it's not a tomato and it's purple and it's shaped like an egg and it's got leaves on top and it's really kind of different and it's cool. I like it just because it is different. I like the taste of them, but they, they, you need to get used to them because when you chew on them, they're kind of squishy. Well, I like them. You have to try it. It's good to try new things. Well, let's look and see what it is. Now, Mommy would know what this is. Here it is. Have you ever seen one of these before? This is an eggplant, and it's called an eggplant because it's shaped like an egg. And it's as purple as you see. Well, this is just really little. I can hold it in my fingers, but if I had a real eggplant, I would hold it like this, with one end being here and the other end being here, because they're pretty big. So what people do is they slice the eggplants, and then they usually fry them or bake them, and they cook them, and inside it's like 
Well, it's kind of like a real light yellow color, like a cream color, they call it, or white. It's got little soft seeds in it, which we could eat. There's seeds inside of it, so it can make more eggplants. That's cool. Most um, vegetables have the seeds on the inside. Some vegetables or fruits have their seeds on the outside. Now, like a watermelon has seeds on the inside, but a strawberry has its seeds on the outside, and I think that's cool. Well, an eggplant has seeds on the inside, and they're edible, and they're part of, I think it's actually a fruit, yeah. Although people buy it in the vegetable, vegetable produce department, but often I did think it was a vegetable, and I just learned it was a fruit. Now, you don't want to eat the leaves, because the leaves are poisonous on the eggplant. And if you touched an eggplant, you'd be like, well, that even feels different. It doesn't feel like anything else that I know of, I don't think. So the next time you go to the store, say to mommy, hey, mommy, show me an eggplant. And if the store has eggplants, mommy will show you the eggplant, because that's what she does. She loves to teach you, too. She'll take you there. As a matter of fact, your mommy is your best teacher in life. She's your first teacher, and she teaches you more than anybody will ever teach you. Yeah, tell mommy Mrs. P said that by the time you're five years old, you'll know half of everything you're ever going to learn. And if you think about that, you can believe it, yeah. Well, let's look at the third thing I have that starts with the letter E, eh. Okay, I'll put it in the tub, and I'll give you some clues. Let's make sure, oh yeah. Got it in there again. Okay, so this begins with the letter E, eh. And you eat these for breakfast, and they're white, and they have a yellow in the middle, and you put them in the frying pan, and you cook them, and do you know what that is? I know you know. It's an, what? An egg! Yeah, 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 it's an egg. It's so smart. I just love working with you because you're so smart. Let's take a look at the egg. There it is. Well, this one's out of its shell, isn't it? That's an egg, all right. Well, let's talk about eggs. The average person eats 325 eggs a year. Well, you might say, well, gee, Mrs. P, I don't know what that is. Well, a year's pretty long. It's got 12 months, and we've been learning them. So that's almost one egg a day. Yeah, 325 eggs eggs a year the average American eats. So that's surprising, isn't it? I don't eat an egg a day. I know I don't. I might eat one or one or one a week or so. You can make different things. You put these in cakes and different recipes and egg salad and yummy yummy things. So that's an egg. Well they these come from chickens. A lot of birds lay eggs, all kinds of eggs, all kinds of colors, speckled ones, blue ones, red ones. A chicken egg is either white or it's kind of a brownish color. And that doesn't matter. That just means different types of chickens have laid the eggs. If a white chicken has lays a chicken egg, then it lays a white egg. But if a chicken has red feathers, then it's going to lay a brown egg. But the eggs are all the same, it doesn't matter. They're all fresh, they're all yummy, they're all good, they're all the same, they're all chicken eggs. We can buy either brown or white eggs, but again, it doesn't matter. They just are all the same, so that's kind of cool. Um, let's see, what, what else can I tell you about chickens? Oh, let's talk about ostrich eggs. Well, I know Nash knows what an ostrich is, you all do. It's that really huge bird that runs in the desert and he can't fly, but he can run. Why, well, I, I looked up ostrich eggs, and they're the biggest eggs in the world. They're really big, and they're about five inches wide and six inches long, and so I don't have one, but I made one that kind of is about that size. I just used a uh, balled up paper, and I put some tape on it so I could show you kind of what the size of an ostrich egg. See my hand? Well, it's about as long as my hand. That's a lot bigger than a chicken egg, isn't it? Yeah, I might be able to hold about, I don't know, three or four chicken eggs in my hand. But this is how big an ostrich egg is. And ostriches are really cool because all the mommy ostriches use the same nest. And they just keep putting eggs in there. Like they go, well, I'm going to have my egg. And they go over and sit down on the nest and lay an egg. 
And the nest, only one nest for all the mommy ostriches, can hold up to like 60 eggs in it. It's called a community nest. And they just all, so it's kind of like, well, which baby's mine? Well, it doesn't matter. You know, they just take their babies and take good care of them. And that's how it works. So ostriches are really cool that way. Well, I'll just set my ostrich egg that I made over here. It's fun to make things. It doesn't need to look exactly like a real one, but it can be close, huh? Sure, we make things all the time out of paper and tape and glue and markers. I love to make things out of things like that. Well, let's talk about the next thing I have. The next thing I have, let's see if we can hear it. Wow. Can you hear it? It's in there, but it doesn't make much noise. And that's because, well, it starts with the letter E, and it's made out of paper. Wow, wonder what that is. Well, let me give you a clue. You might be able to guess this. It is something that your mother uses when she wants to send paper in the mail. She puts the paper she wants to send inside of this. And she might lick it and to close it so it doesn't open up and she'll put a stamp on it. Do you know what it is? It's an envelope. Yes, an envelope. Now this one's really tiny. That's why it didn't make much noise at all, but it's in there. Let's take it out. And that's what an envelope looks like, see? Now this one's really little. See, this is the back of it, and the flap opens, and your mother puts in her card or her whatever she's mailing. She puts it inside here. See? And then she shuts it. She This has glue on it. See this? It has glue on it. She either peels off and reveals the glue, or she can lick the glue. But she has to be careful, because sometimes when you lick an envelope, uh, like that, um, you could get a paper cut, so you have to be careful. So mommy does this stuff. Mommy does this stuff when you do it when you're older. And then the glue is wet, and she'll close it, and she'll run her fingers on it like that, and that'll seal it up. And then on the front, she'll put a stamp and write an address here, and she'll mail it, and the mailman will come and take it away, and that's pretty cool. Well, I actually got one of my envelopes that is a real-sized envelope. This one came with our set. But this is a real sized envelope, and you see it's made the same way. There's the flap. This is called a security envelope. This one is not a security envelope because, see, on the inside, this one doesn't have any ink or any print. So if somebody put something in this envelope, well, somebody might be able to see through the paper and see what's in there. And so they make security envelopes where they put this blue ink. And so that way, people can't see in there to see what's in there. The only person that should know what's in the envelope is who the envelope is for. Whoever mommy writes the name on here. Maybe your aunt or your grandma or maybe a bill company like the water company. That's what whoever it is, that's who should see what's in here. Nobody else should see it. So that's what's called a security envelope. Well, I took one of my envelopes to show you that it's just a piece of paper. Get it all fixed up here again. I unfolded the envelope so we could take a look at it. Well, there it is. And I, we know this flap and we put our mail in there, but this is just other flaps. See, this flap comes down and this flap goes over here and this flap goes over here. And we can see what an envelope is just a piece of paper. And it's cut in a special way and then folded and mailed off. So you can make your own envelopes. Yeah, you could take an envelope and unfold it and trace it and cut it out and you could you could fold it and you'd have your own envelope. As a matter of fact, a long time ago, during something called the Civil War, the soldiers used to take wallpaper off of the wall. The walls used to have paper on. Some people still have wallpaper, lots of people do. But they'd take that paper and they'd cut their own envelope because they didn't have envelopes and they make their envelopes out of that wallpaper and send it back home to their mom or their wife or whoever and say, I love you. So that was kind of cool, I think, to make envelopes out of wallpaper. But the soldiers were smart, and that's what they did. So uh, our next 
E item. I'm going to put it in here. Here, go in. Yeah, clumped. There it is. I wonder what it is. Let's guess. It starts with the letter E, eh, and it's a bird. And it has really long wings. And um, there's different kinds of this particular bird. The one that we talk about a lot is called a bald what? It's got a white head and a black body. Do you know what it is? A bald eagle. It's an eagle. Well, this eagle is not actually a bald eagle. It's a, just an eagle. This is what an eagle looks like. Yeah, it's not the best eagle, but you get the idea. It has long wings and a body, and it has sharp claws. He has his claws tucked up under him there. Can you see them? That's what eagles do. They're great fishermen. Now, bald eagles, they always live along the waterways, the rivers, and the creek beds because they're fishermen. And they swoop down and they put their, their feet out like this and they grab the fish right out of the water and take it up into the sky. They like to eat fish. So that's where their nests are along the rivers. That's pretty cool. We have bald eagles around here now. When I was a little girl, we didn't. We used to a long time ago, but then they all got hurt or went away and we didn't have any more bald eagles, but they've come back and now they live here. And so you can see them. They live in, all, oh, really? Just about every river in the state of Pennsylvania. The Loyal Hannah by Ligonier, the Clarion River by Clarion. They just live everywhere now and I'm so glad they're back. They're beautiful. I kind of wish this was a bald eagle, but if it was, his body would be black and his head would be white. Now, a baby bald eagle, they uh, don't have a white head. For four whole years, which is about how old you are, they have a black head. And so people don't know they're bald eagles. They don't get their, their white feathers on their head. They're not really bald. They just kind of look bald because they have white feathers on their head. It takes four years to get them. The boy eagles, the bald eagles, are smaller than the, the girl eagles, the mommy eagles. And you can tell a boy eagle because they're, well, they're a little bit smaller and they're a little less mean looking. The mummy eagle looks pretty fierce. The boy eagle has a black line around his eye and he has whiter feathers on his head. Yeah, but he helps with the babies. He sits on the nest and he goes and he catches fish and he brings them back to the nest way up high in the tree. Can you imagine that? Their nest weighs about Oh my goodness, so much. About 1,600 pounds. Their nest gains 200 pounds a year. Imagine that. Who would have guessed it? 200 pounds a year. Well, 200 pounds, that's like a big man. Yeah, 200 pounds a year. And then that just adds up. Every year they put that on there until the nest is, weighs about 1,600 pounds which is really big, but they need a big nest because they're a big bird. Well, let's see. Let's take a look at the last of our six things. I'm going to put it in the tub and shake it. It's kind of heavy. Let me help you guess what this is. It starts with the letter E, eh, right? And this is something we use. It's a tool that if we make a pencil mark that we don't want, we take this, we hold it in our hands, and it's usually red or pink, but it could be white, it could be blue, different colors, and we rub the pencil that we don't want on the paper, and it'll take it off of the pencil, and it'll stick to this thing. Do you know what it is? What's on the tip of our pencils? An eraser, you're right, that's what it is. Let's take, take a look at the eraser. Well, I was thinking, well, what could possibly be interesting about an eraser? Well, I'm looking for my pencil here, but at the end of the pencil, it has an eraser on it. You know that. And that, that little piece that's at the end, that little piece of eraser is called the plug. It's called the plug of the pencil. Can you say plug? That's kind of fun. Plug, plug, plug. 
Okay, well, this is an eraser, and it's made out of, well, there are these trees in another part of the world, and they're called rubber trees. And the men, they put like a cut in the bark of the rubber tree, and rubber looks like milk. When it comes out, it's, it pours out slowly, and they collect it, and it's white, and they collect it in buckets. And that's what rubber is. It comes from a rubber tree, and so it's made of rubber. Our newer erasers are made of different things, but here's what's really cool about this. Well, a long time ago, before erasers were invented, there was a scientist, and they used, everybody used, guess what they used for erasers? You're not going to believe it. They would take a piece of bread and ball it up into a ball, and they put a little water on that, and they would use that ball of dough, and that was their eraser. And they would take the bread, the dough, and they would like rub the, the pencil and it would take it off. Well, meanwhile, this scientist, one day he was writing with his pencil and he had his ball of bread there, his, his, which was an eraser, this ball of dough. And beside it, there was a ball of rubber too from the rubber tree. Well, he accidentally grabbed the rubber from the rubber tree, the eraser, instead of the ball of dough, and he rubbed his pencil, and he was so surprised because it took the pencil off of the paper much better than the ball of dough. And he was like, oh my goodness, I gotta tell everybody, I gotta tell them that the rubber from the rubber tree is a great eraser for pencils. And it's been that way ever since. So it was accidentally discovered. I thought that was cool. And I thought, well, geez, could a, an eraser actually be interesting? Well, yeah, just everything in God's world is very interesting. That's pretty cool, all right. Well, that happens because the eraser is actually takes the pencil off the paper because the, the lead out of the pencil that makes the black line, it likes to stick to this better than it likes to stick to the paper. And so when it rubs it, that jumps onto the eraser and the eraser grabs it off of the pencil because this is stickier than the paper. It doesn't feel sticky, but to the pencil it is, and that's pretty cool. It would much rather stick to the eraser. Okay, goodbye to the eraser. Goodbye, eraser. Thanks for learning with us. Well, we've had a great time learning about our elephant and our eggplant and our envelope and our eagle and our eraser, all of them starting with the letter E. Here's the big E again. There it is. I want you to practice writing a capital E and writing a small e. Now, if you don't remember what they look like, Mommy will write it for you at the top of the page. She knows what they look like. She knows. And then you can practice writing it. And I hope that you're practice writing your name for me. And if you do, well, you could have Mommy take a picture of it and send it to me. I'd love to get it and see what you're doing. I know you do so well. Don't forget your middle name now. You're learning. If you're four or five years old, you could be working on that. But if you're three years old, I just want you to work on your first name. And that's enough. You'll learn next year and the year after that. That's great. And we'll learn all our life. So many things to learn. Do you know if we learned all our life and we just learned all the time, we'd never even get close to learning everything there is to learn. There's only one person that knows everything, and that's God. And I'm so glad we belong to him. I'm so glad. Don't forget to talk to him every day, because they'll help you through everything. And he never thinks you're bothering him. If you talk to him all day long, he wouldn't, he wouldn't get tired of you. He'll never get tired of you. He loves you so much. He made you. So I'll talk to you soon, and I'll be back with the letter F, but for today, that was the letter E. I'm going to say goodbye now, and don't forget, I love you. Bye-bye.